Good morning, Peter Gertz, I'm a psychiatrist. Anti-psychiatry. I get a good amount of comments saying things like psychiatry is fraud, is criminal, and I have questions for those critics. Do you work with psychotic, agitated, demented, suicidal, or homicidal people? What would you do if your son or daughter were suicidal? Theory is different from practice or personal experience. So making comments, criticizing is one thing in theory, but practice and personal experience are something else. What would you do if you're in an elevator next to someone talking to themselves, saying things like, I'm gonna kill him, I'm gonna kill him. Would you want someone to intervene? As far as someone who's against psychiatric medicine, if you're confronted with someone in an acutely agitated psychotic state, would you be able to show how to calm that person down without psychiatric medicine? So again, to criticize is easy but do you have a better alternative for working with severely emotionally troubled people? And if so, come forward. So I welcome those comments. I welcome comments that are pretty much any comment, but including comments that are quite critical of psychiatry because I know for sure there are many things to improve in psychiatry. And I really welcome the questioning of various aspects. I'm aware, well aware, psychiatry is far from perfect. And sometimes terrible things happen and have happened over the years. Critics can say that diagnoses in psychiatry are not valid. Dr. Thomas Sass did that. And we can make the situation simpler if we don't even, let's say for the purposes of this talk, don't even use diagnoses. So just descriptions. Obviously, these things exist. Severe depression exists. Mania, a manic state exists. Psychosis exists. Dementia exists. So we don't even, for this talk, we don't even have to use the term diagnoses, but various states of being very troubled definitely exist. They're obvious. We see them, whether you're a lay person or a medical person. And critics often say there's no biological evidence for making diagnoses in psychiatry, like, for example, with pneumonia, you can make a diagnosis of pneumonia if you isolate a bacterium, for instance. But in psychiatry, that sometimes that type of thing can actually happen. So it's not black or white. For example, someone may come in severely depressed and then be found to have a very low, I'm sorry, very high TSH, so thyroid stimulating hormone. So physical medical issues can definitely affect people psychologically, psychiatrically. And similarly, if someone has vitamin B12 deficiency, that can affect their psychological, mental, cognitive functioning. So some things in psychiatry actually are medical and can be treated medically physically, mentally, uh, physically, medically. If someone says medications, psychiatric medications are all bad, that sounds quite extreme to me. And the question is, for me then, what would that person do, that critic, if their family member were grossly psychotic, manic, suicidal, not sleeping or eating, or homicidal? And critics of psychiatric medications may be making 
a good amount of patients feel ashamed of taking psychiatric medicine. So we don't want to shame people who take psychiatric medicine and do well on the medicine. There's that aspect. Another criticized area is involuntary psychiatric hospitalization. And definitely, I don't enjoy locking people up as much as possible. I feel treatment needs to be voluntary. In fact, in the long run, in my opinion, successful treatment has to be voluntary because otherwise there is no treatment. The person is not going to engage in treatment. So extreme views can represent all or nothing thinking. And that type of thinking, in my opinion, can be dangerous. The criticism of psychiatry generally come from people who are not working in an emergency room or working on a psychiatric ward. So generally from people who do not have direct experience with severely troubled psychiatric people, psychiatric patients. In my opinion, it's important to be pragmatic. First, do no harm is important. We want to keep an open mind, but an open mind in every direction. So we want to be open to the potential use of psychiatric medication, to the potential use of psychotherapy, or to the option of no formal mental health treatment at all. And Again, in my opinion, the essence of science is keeping an open mind. Now, there are many other issues involved and worth talking about, but not in this brief talk. Social issues obviously are connected with mental health, financial issues. So there are many other aspects that I'm not talking about, but let's keep an open mind. Thank you.